All right, we are back to our study in Colossians chapter two, verses twenty through twenty-three. Today, we're talking about in this uh, this study this week. We've been talking about Paul and his commands and his instructions to the church in Colossae to not listen to the judgment of the false teachers, not to let them disqualify them as if they're not real Christians because they haven't had these visions and and dreams and all these uh, phenomena happening to them. Don't be disqualified by them. Don't let them tell you that you're you're not a real believer. Don't let them say that to you. That's not true. And then today we're going to look at how he told them not to submit to their regulations. So we're going to look at 20 through 23, which is really the second paragraph of what we've been looking at. And he says, why do you submit to regulations? Now, Jesus has his commands and regulations, right? As the head, he has the right to do that and to demand his body to obey him. But these that Paul is speaking of are regulations according to the elemental spirits of the world. These regulations are human precepts and teachings. Paul mentions do not handle, do not taste, and do not touch. This generic list of don'ts shows us what he's getting at. He sounds being specific, he's being general, right? Behavioral modification has an appearance of wisdom. But if, to borrow Jesus' analogy, if the tree is bad, it doesn't matter how good you prune it. It will still produce bad fruit, or no fruit at all. Some people think they can pull off the miracle of Charlie Brown's Christmas tree by refraining from different things, right? Well, it's a bad tree, but you know, we'll just put all this stuff on it, and it'll be amazing. And these things are not sins, right? They may not be bad things. Oh, I don't eat meat because it brings me close to God. Oh, okay, maybe it does. But you know, keep that to yourself. All right? God did not make that a law for us. It doesn't say that anywhere in Scripture. You can't prove that from the Bible. Or it didn't tell you you should do that either. So don't make it a law for yourself. And don't make it a law for other people that you try to force them in. Now, you might be better because of that. But it doesn't mean everyone would be better because of that. It doesn't mean anyone would be worse for doing, not doing, or doing what you're doing. It might look like wisdom to others, right? Like, wow, okay, if I don't do that, I'll be closer to God. But in the end, it is self-made religion and asceticism and severity to the body. But there are no value in stopping the indulgence of the flesh. That's what he says. We need to get this straight because a lot of people are still, I mean, I don't, I've read lots of books where it's like, here's my legalistic set of, of things that you should do. It's like, wait a minute, why are you telling me what to do? Unless you can prove it from Scripture then, you know, don't put your legalistic ideas on me. Let me give you another example of this kind of thinking. Many of you are familiar with, you know, 12-step programs like Alcoholics Anonymous. One of the concepts taught in AA is once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic, right? If you are just prone to addiction, you always be prone to addiction. So, uh, you know, if you're breaking a, a drinking addiction, then chances are you'll get addicted to something else. Uh, drugs, smoking, sex, and really this idea of just moving you from drinking onto something that is less destructive, less harmful for your life. So stopping alcohol looks like wisdom, but it, you never really deal with the addictive behavior in Alcoholics Anonymous. You're not really going with the fact that, you know, that you've replaced the one true God with your addiction. Um, you've run after and you've addicted to yourself and you might be prone to that maybe there's some genetic thing going on but still the bible says you can be you know once for some of you for all these things so you can break this addictive behavior um but there's real no wisdom in it because it doesn't really have an eternal benefit then if you're still an addict where is the benefit you're just not going to die from drinking you're going to die from something else but you're still an addict you still have the problem of being addicted to something that's not God. So swearing off alcohol and attributing it to a higher power is according to human precepts and teachings, unfortunately. Only faith in Jesus Christ and obedience to his commands and the work of the Holy Spirit can bring about real change. You might be able to change your behavior, but ultimately it's not a heart change. Only religion commanded by God is real religion. Everything else is just shadows. You're just playing with the shadow when you could have the real thing. 
The main problem here is that these people were telling others to submit to their own rules. They were robbing Christians of their freedom in Christ. They came up with their own rules or were trying to impose some sort of hybrid Jewish-Christian religion on people. But the church dealt with that. They dealt with that at the Jerusalem Council right away in the church. This didn't take a council, you know, back in the 300, 400, 500s. You know, this was at the very beginning of the church. They dealt with this. In Acts 15, Peter asked, Why are you putting God to the test by placing a yoke on the neck of the disciples that neither our fathers nor we have been able to bear? So he's saying, Why are you telling these people to go back to these regulations and, and all these kinds of things and be these legalistic people if we couldn't even keep the laws ourselves? If we couldn't keep the laws that we put on ourselves. And so you're asking these people to do that? That doesn't make any sense. Why are you putting God to the test, he says? You're testing God now with what you're doing. That's how serious it is. So why are you going to do this? Why are you going to keep trying to keep these Gentile Christians to keep the law that we and our, our forefathers couldn't keep? We couldn't do it. We didn't do it. So now you're going to ask them to do it? Why are you doing that? That doesn't make any sense. We are free in Christ. We're not bound to that law. That law brought death. It showed us sin. It showed us death. And they're going to say, you need to submit to that. You're free in Christ. Tell them to submit to the Lord Jesus Christ and obey him, not the law. Because the law was only a, a, a teacher until the true teacher came, and he did. So listen to him. They got it confused. They were like, go back to the shadow. Run back to the shadow. Yeah, I know the substance is here, but you love the shadow better. Don't do that. So what was Peter's rebuke of all this? We are saved through grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what he said. We're saved by grace. Works don't have a place here. So if you're relying upon works or saying, well, because I don't do this, I don't do that, I don't do this, I don't do that, I do this, I, I have my, you know, if you're relying upon your Bible study every day at, at you know, 6 a.m., well, I'm a better Christian because of this. Are you? Is it affecting your heart? Because the only things that impact our heart and make them and conform them to the likeness of Christ, that's the only thing that truly matters. Because we can say, well, you know, I don't want, I don't go on the internet. Okay, do you watch TV? Do you do all these other things? Are you addicted? I'm not addicted to the internet. But you're addicted to everything else. So, that's the thing you got. We got to be careful of that. Because like, you got all these people who come up with these legalistic rules and try to impose them on everybody else. And like, well, this is the right way to do it. This is the right way to live. This is the right thing to do. We got to be careful of those people. Because unless it's in the Bible and says, okay, here it is in Matthew chapter 18. This is the way you should... You know, do this. Don't listen to that. Don't let them impose that. I'm probably, that's what Paul is saying. Don't let them impose or don't submit to their regulations. Don't do that. Unless it's commanded by Jesus Christ, you don't have to obey that. And don't let them do that to you. Do not submit to them. Because then you're just listening to them and they're putting God to the test. Do you want to put God to the test? You don't put God to the test. That is not wise. That is one of the worst things you can do. So, uh, we'll leave it there for t this for today. Uh, and next time we'll come back and we'll do a little conclusion, kind of wrap up the loose ends here, and uh, hopefully apply this to our lives a little bit better. So, come back for that.